start out asking a few questions. So the first question is for Jordan. So Jordan, uh, food uh, marketers, food marketers use the term healthy for like all manner of offerings in, in, in today's world for, for, for quite some time. The idea of healthy has been around for quite some time in, 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 in the public, but uh, there seems to be very little, well frankly, not a lot of science to back a lot of these claims up. Uh, regulation, uh, rules around advertising, labeling seems to be pretty, pretty lackluster. Um, what would you, could, could you name maybe two or three tips you'd give just to the general public on what to look for in terms of healthy versus not really healthy? <laughs> the first thing I would probably go to, which I think is easy to like, monitor maybe an easier lifestyle adjustment would be looking at the oils you're consuming. So a lot of products will kind of market themselves as healthy, but if you actually look at the ingredients, there's like tons of seed oils, which um, are known as a polyunsaturated fatty acids. And they basically create inflammation in your body because they oxidize especially at like a higher heat, and then that can cause free radical stress, which could potentially lead to illness. So just by like changing the oils we're using and like trying to eat more plant-based whole foods and buying less processed stuff, we could potentially like be a lot healthier. Um, another one that comes to mind is um, AW, and their <laughs> marketing um, yeah. would be formal meat. Uh, in Canada, we don't add hormones to our milk, but we, there are still synthetic and natural hormones added to cows um, to make them basically grow bigger and have more muscle, leaner, and all animals and humans have hormones. It's, that's a natural component. There's always going to be hormones if you're consuming meat and dairy products. Um, so they may not be adding hormones, but like that's not a true statement by saying hormone free. So I think just being aware of that would be helpful. Um, and then I would probably also say, this might not be a love, maybe some global for this comment, but um, I've been vegan for Seven, almost seven years, and I just wanted to say that just because a product is marketed as vegan or gluten free doesn't mean it's inherently healthy. It, if you're eating a whole foods plant based diet, that's amazing. That's the goal. Everyone eating more plants is like my goal um, as a nutritionist. But like for example, my partner was amazing, and he was grabbing gluten free buns, and also I wanted him to be vegan too. And then I was like, oh, this kind of tastes funny. Like, and then I looked at the packaging. There were eggs. Even though these were dairy free, there were eggs. And there was gelatin oh, yeah. in a gluten free burger bun. I was like, why? So just like those add-ins. And like unfortunately, it's kind of unfortunate we have to look at the labels of things, but just being, I guess, more conscious of that. Well, thank you. That was some great tips. Any do you have any 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 favorites? Um, well, I mean the one thing I would maybe suggest it's a bit of aside from absolute ingredients is that just get curious about the company behind the product and what they're actually trying to sell. So I mean from my perspective we're talking about you know diet culture and um, someone's trying to sell you you know a weight loss program. What are they really trying to you know they're selling you a weight loss program but they're calling it wellness, right? Uh, just get curious. See if it, it really lands well with you if this brand has your best interest at heart. Um, and look, at the end of the day, I'm sure people's intentions are well, but a lot of people are trying to make money, right? So, um, yeah, I think it's a little bit. I think that the trust element is a, I, I trust in general has been in the public. We don't trust the, the marketers anymore. So we're, we're a little bit lost. I think it's, it's good to really question. Yeah. I totally agree. Nicola, I know we, we hit a few of your favorites for your top hits, but I, I think you probably have uh, another one or two. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. 
Um, when, uh, so I'm talking about my trip to Africa that I just came back from the end, and I went and visited my grandmother who lives in a very rural community in Malawi where there's no electricity, there's no plumbing, you walk for a few miles to get water, and basically everything you're doing is to be able to cook your next meal, um, which includes having to grow the food yourself. So, um, and I gave my, Lucky's wearing one of our shirts, our Eat Real to Heal shirt, um, yes, thank you for wearing that today. And um, and I gave her a shirt, and you know they have two sets of clothing: the clothing that's just been washed and the clothing that they're wearing. So um, and, you know, so she was so grateful to get this T-shirt, and she put it on, but she said, "What does it say? What does it mean?" She doesn't speak English. Um, and so I told her, you know, it's it's a shirt that says "Eat Real to Heal." And she said, "What's that?" And I said, "Well, it's um, it, it's about not eating." on this, um, you know, the processed foods, it's about eating plant-based whole foods, and she's like, what are processed foods? And I said, well, you know, you can go to a store and you can buy rice, but the fibers are taken out of the rice and a lot of the other nutrients, and then you're just basically, and they're like, why would you do that? Um, or I said, would you buy a bag of flour? And she's like, why would you buy a bag of flour? It goes rancid so quickly, you can't buy flour. Um, and, you know, they make the flour, so a lot of it is about um, definitely staying away from the processed food. So if you go into a restaurant, you see that they have cans in their kitchen or boxed, um, you know, plastic packaged foods, you basically anything that has a label on it. Um, and if they try and say that that's healthy, right there you know that it actually isn't. And you touched on all of it, from the oils to the salts to the refined sugars and refined flours and everything. If you can't pronounce it. Yeah. <laughs> if it, if it yes, food is ingredients, it shouldn't include ingredients, basically. Yeah. Or if it says natural flavors. Oh, natural flavors, that's what it is. Yeah. If it says natural flavors, yes. Yeah. Natural flavors, no. No, no, sorry. So you just have to be, um, you know, a little bit leery of that. If it, if it has a package and then somebody has to market to, to you, chances are it's not healthy right there and then because um, also it has to be um, preserved to be able to last in that package. Um, and one of the things that was interesting again about being in Africa was just that, um, you know, it's mango season right now. All the mangoes are going right at all, all at the same time. So everybody just eats mangoes, like a lot of mangoes, and then, you know, they're the SEMA. And, you know, then it's going to be the papaya season, the guava season, and we don't eat them in the seasons in our country. So, you know, looking um, when you're considering purchasing food, you want to also think about purchasing food that's in season because it at least will mean that it's been picked recently versus being picked. A lot of fruits and vegetables, vegetables are actually picked like months ago when they're not even ripe. So by the time they get to you, they've actually, um, they are, they are, we call it ripening, but it's not, it's actually they're decaying. And decaying enough that they're soft enough for you to eat. So they didn't get the time to get the nutrients in the sun before they were picked, so they're not very nutritious to begin with. So eating in the seasons is also a thing. I'm talking too much, I'm like, yeah. Not at all. That's perfect. That's perfect. I know we're on the timeline.